Welcome to the second annual Tony Hawk Tober. Six reviews in six days, rolling through one of my personal favourite series of all time to chronicle its rise and demise. Ah, it feels so good to be back. What's that smell? Get out of here, you creep! Go on to sleep! This is my bedroom, not your skate park. I've been living here for 40 fucking years. You fucking think you own the place. Get out of here. Sorry, Sam. Won't happen again. No, it fucking won't. Last year, we took a look at my introduction to the franchise post-pro skater, saw the absolute highs and how quickly they can turn into lows. But my question for today is, can Tony Hawk's Proving Ground be the game to resurrect this series, or will it just continue this sad descent towards irrelevancy? Hope that bum doesn't come back. Proving Ground, the final Tony Hawk title developed by Neversoft, was released in late 2007, just 30 days after EA's skate franchise debuted, boasting fluent flick trick controls and a sprawling world, full to the brim with a much more down to earth and realistic approach to the skating genre in comparison to previous Tony Hawk endeavours. Finally, our beloved pro skater had some direct competition, as Proving Ground dropped in a very similar form. It had a huge scale open world, realistic physics, and the return of Nail a Trick, along with a shitload of new additions. But hold up, that's not the version I had as a kid. See, it would be another two years before I'd make the leap to the next generation of gaming systems. So before we take a look at this version, we have to check out what this one has to offer. The first thing we see here is the title screen, and the fucking state of it. Comparing it to previous games in the series, it has nothing to offer. And I'd like to point out, that semen stain down at the bottom really makes a lasting first impression. We're starting off strong this year. Before we can play though, we've got to build a skater. I'm happy to report that the restrictive BS from Project 8 is gone in exchange for a more traditional cast mode. A lot more options all around, but apparently it's no girls allowed. Damn. This game is centred on the three main styles of skating. Hardcore shredding, rigging up custom skate spots and a career of competition and fame. Unfortunately, Skate already nabbed the fourth and penultimate Skater class, Hall of Meat. <coughs> the only difference with these is the type of missions you'll be doing for each, and which abilities come into play. These include things like aggro pushing to gain extra speed, various extensions onto Nail a Trick, which I'll get into later, and the Rigging Mode, which allows you to place various objects within the level to skate, bringing Creator Park to the main game. I do like this concept, but I never find myself using it outside of missions. Levels don't encourage the use of them either, so it's just a waste. The levels themselves are also pretty lacklustre. Most of the areas feel like they were included purely for tutorial purposes, and since we're once again restricted to single levels with the downgrade, they don't flow well at all. There is just no longevity to many of these outside of the sparse missions. The first map was over within a few minutes, and then the second has this super long drawn out multi-part challenge that's really boring. Each location only has two missions if you're lucky, and they're just all over the place. Characters reference events we haven't seen yet, and even things we never get to see through the entire game. I don't think I've ever played something this disjointed from itself. Distance and line challenges also make a comeback, but unfortunately, there isn't much else to be had here. 
you can go up to arcade machines like in Thug 2 and access some different game modes such as high score, classic goals which are okay but due to the off level structure I don't like them here as much as in Project 8. And it's so strange, they actually show you where all of the items are to collect. Man, we had it hard back in the day. It took me ages as a kid trying to find that magic bum on Venice Beach. Pop an ollie over the bastard and it'd be the last you'd ever see of him. But no, just show me where everything is, take all the fun away. That'll be fun. And lastly, we have a new mode, Hawkman. The idea here is to collect the pellets in a quick run, with yellow requiring a grind, green for manual, red for air and blue for wall ride. It's a neat idea, I just think it's kind of redundant given we already have the line challenges which are the exact same thing, with less restrictions on how you get from A to B. By the 6th level, I already have levels 7, 8 and 9 unlocked because there is nothing here and most of those only have one mission to complete. Really just showcasing how brief and lacking this game is, even for some of the better levels in the entire game. Well, aside from the Air and Space Museum, I swear nobody tested this fucking climbing mission with BAM. The camera is so broken, it's not even funny. All I want to do is jump back and grab onto the ledge, but I can't see what I'm doing. We've been making these jumps since underground. Why is it impossible all of a sudden? That's not the only broken thing in this game either. I got stuck on a tuft of grass once. That was something else. <laughs> you bastard! Proving Ground's downgrade is a dysfunctional mess very comparable to the Project 8 scenario, with so much of where the series was trying to go stripped back and replaced with nothing, Tony Hawk's Proving Ground gets 3 out of 10. It's a damn awful shame really, not so much that the game is this bad, but that I had to experience the bad version growing up. I hated this game so much when I was younger that this is honestly the first time I've played it since Christmas morning back in 2007. But finally, it's time to check out the true version of this game. And I think it's worth noting that from this point on, everything you'll be seeing on Hawktober this week will be my first time playing it. So, let's get stuck in. As I mentioned at the top, following the trend of modern games, Proving Ground features a large open world. Much like Project 8, it's all the same locations we had in the PS2 version, plus a few extras, combined together seamlessly to create a free-flowing environment to skate in. Surprisingly, even though these sections are practically unchanged, I find the layout and flow so much better adjusted. This feels like a real location. The world spans Philly, Baltimore and DC, with these connection areas putting the whole thing together. In the previous open world of Project 8, everything felt jammed up a little unnaturally in my opinion, and as a result, the game had issues with frame rates and stuttering while transitioning between areas from time to time. Reverting back to the American Wasteland format, having short sections to help mask the loading works so much better here. Mainly because these transitional areas alone feel just as overflowing with stuff to skate as the primary areas. And through an entire playthrough, not once did I encounter any lag. However, there is a small three-way tunnel connecting the three areas in the centre that does require loading. But I was only ever here twice. Before I can even do my first ollie, however, we're thrusted into that good old skateboard porn. Thankfully, it's nowhere near as intrusive as it was in Project 8. The first major thing I need to comment on is missions. It's immediately clear why the downgrade felt so disjointed. Each skating style has three different episodes to go along with it, so nine in total. 
once we get out of Philly, the entire world is opened up very quickly and we begin travelling all over, working through various objectives to progress through each prose episode. What we got before were missions that take place at the start of the timeline, appearing at the end and vice versa, with large chunks of the actual story completely left out. I said it last year for Project 8, and I'll say it again for this. It feels like my memory is being altered by playing this. I can't believe the absolute disrespect shown to fuck this version up so bad. But, at least we're playing the game how it was intended now. The three career episodes are focused around competitions against Eric Sparrow. Yes, THE Eric Sparrow, the dickhead friend from Underground, and the also returning Nail a Trick mode. New this year is Nail a Grab, which can easily be linked together with flip tricks and finger flips to get even better scores. This was also in the PS2 version, but exclusive to new gen is Nail a Manual. This mode offers less in terms of variety as you can only really land regular manuals and nose manuals from either nail a trick or grab. It would have been nice to see landing primo, but in general, these additions allow for some crazy combo lines that definitely rivals the skate franchise. Being so focused on flick tricks, grab moves were never really utilised in skate, so it's interesting to see it here. Because of all these new trick modes though, special moves suffer immensely. They're just not used. The list is so short to begin with and you can do them whenever you please as there is no special meter. It's a bit of a shame to see what was one day such a major selling point grow old and pass on like this. The hardcore episodes are focused on the aggro push, skate checking and bowl skating. Honestly, most of this feels pretty weak. The only purpose skate checking serves is completing the series of missions purely designed for it, and there is no other use. When you reach the end of an episode, you get an epic trial of the things you've learned, and the skate checking one is just the worst. It's got all these garbage filters over everything mixed in with slow motion. It's probably the worst thing out of the entire game. Skating under the influence. Don't do drugs, kids. And as for bowl skating, this goes against the entire foundation of what made the Pro Skater series a dominant standout force. It's all about not getting air. We can now carve around the walls of bowls and slash along the coping, forcing us to stay on the ground. It's so uninteresting and really serves no purpose when the entire appeal of these games to begin with were those impossible airs. I know the game is trying to be realistic, but this seriously crosses the line. Finally, the rigging episodes. Bam's climbing saga actually makes sense this time, getting to see the missing cutscenes, but this jump here is still completely retarded. And the missions where you actually build stuff are much the same as well. It sucks that this mode doesn't really add all that much. Where it is cool though is that we're allowed this giant warehouse as a blank canvas to create our own park using the various rigger items and many, many objects from the main world. I didn't really use this until the end of the game, when I'd beaten everything and had plenty of money to spend on items, but it's a cool feature. Some items can be a little glitchy, but it serves its purpose injecting some of that creativity back into this series. And it's also the only thing worth spending money on. But despite my hang-ups with some of this stuff, there is honestly so much to do in this game, and... I thoroughly enjoyed it. The true open world is the best we've seen yet for Tony Hawk, literally overflowing with story objectives, side missions, and these distance challenges which honestly work so much better outside the cages that were the PS2 version's levels. This manual challenge here in particular had me engaged for a good 15 minutes until I finally landed it. And 
doing so makes you feel accomplished. Each location has so many different photo and video opportunities as well. These are also new to this version. Film challenges give you a list of moves to complete at the AM, Pro or Sick rating, and once you're done, you can actually watch it back and save them for later. Even when you're just skating around, you can start filming yourself and then take what you've shot and edit it into a skate video. Holy shit, this is fucking awesome! It's a totally optional feature that, in my opinion, should have been incorporated into an actual episode where you'd have to get footage of a certain quality to make a 5 star skate video. Arto's career episode is doing just that, but why don't we get to edit the final product ourselves? It's such a missed opportunity as for an in-game editor, this is one of the best I've seen. My only problems with it is that it lacks an undo button, and actually filming stuff is counterintuitive. Looking at Skate, you can mess around and play until something cool happens, then go back and save it. But in Proving Ground, you have to already be filming your session. As for Photo Mode, this is much more in depth. We get to place our cameras wherever we like, but we actually get graded on our positions, timing of the trick, framing of the entire shot, and various other things. There is a great mission with Stevie Williams in the Subway Connection area, where we get a list of 10 different photos to snap, and 10 minutes to get as many as we can. Things like doing a trick in front of a train, nailing a trick through a window, and stalling on the golden shopping trolley. It's such a mad dash to find each spot, set up a camera, get into position, and capture the trick. It's like a giant scavenger hunt. This was the standout moment of this game for me. I could do this shit all day. But, my one complaint with photo mode is having to click down on the right analog stick to take the picture. The timing is down to the frame, and if you're in nail a trick mode, taking your hand off the stick leads to bailing. So, you have to press it with your chin like you're a limbless war veteran or some shit. I'm not Goro, so this ain't good. But despite that and some of my other complaints, this is a fucking good game. It takes what Project 8 was trying to do and improves on so many aspects. For the most part, the unrealistic zany tone is completely dropped in favour of something more down to earth. The world is so skatable with a lot of really enjoyable missions, even if a few can get a bit samey after a while. Some of the new additions are incredible, and the ones that aren't, even though they don't have much purpose and can even go against the pro skater formula, aren't bad. Like, everything still functions as it should, none of these have any glaring problems, so it's not intrusive by any means. And this game is just so massive, I played for over 10 hours and only really beat the primary episode goals. There is so much to do here that in this version, I barely even touch the arcade modes because even though it's still enjoyable, it's old news. This is the direction Tony Hawk games should have taken following Underground, but because they dicked about and waited until someone else came along, this seriously underrated skateboarding game fell by the wayside. After completing all your goals, in true pro skater fashion, we do one final lap of the world, putting all our skills to the test to impress the pros for one final mission, the Team Challenge. This is anticlimactic as fuck. It's very similar to the same mission from Thug, in that each pro has to complete an objective based on their specific ability. But since it's the same thing we've been doing the entire time, easier than some of the times we've already done it, it's a less than impressive ending. All we get is a good job bro from Birdman, and that's it. 
Cue sympathy of the devil for the credits and we're out. People got mad last year that I didn't talk much about the music, but that's because I had nothing new to add from prior episodes. And it's the same case here. It's still a great soundtrack. I'll be sure to let you know when it goes to shit. But look, overall, I had a fucking blast playing through this game. With all the improvements over Project 8 and the great new additions, especially seeing the version I had to fucking grow up with, I thought Project 8 last year may have been the final glimpse of hope for this franchise before it went downhill, as after last year's Hawktober, I actually went back and continued playing it for another week or so. But man, Proving Ground just kills it. However, I can't deny that some of the new additions go against what this game should be focusing on, meaning that we're spending a large portion of the game doing stuff that doesn't really fit. And on top of that, all the little things I mentioned still aren't enough to justify a lower score. So, the definitive version of Tony Hawk's Proving Ground gets 7 out of 10. This is a whopper game, guys. I've heard some people try to discredit it, but honestly, I don't see how. This is the best Tony Hawk game since Underground, which is honestly something I wasn't prepared to say going into this. If I didn't see it with my own crossed eyes, I wouldn't believe it. It's damn right, good sir. Here you go. I need some fresh toilet paper. <laughs> no. Well, that's Hawktober 2018 kicked off with a bang. And I've got the feeling the rest of this week is going to be quite the ride. But until tomorrow, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share. I'm Square Eye Jack, and I hope you have a great fucking day. Thanks for watching.